Welcome back to the programme. Well, in 2011, footage from Winterbourne View Hospital in Gloucestershire shocked the nation. The institution was meant to care for people with learning disabilities. Vulnerable patients were instead beaten and abused. Six members of staff were imprisoned at that time. And the government vowed to act. A year later, Health Minister Sir Norman Lamb published the government's response. And at the dispatch box, he vowed to reduce the number of patients in these institutions. However, the government machinery failed to respond. And a new report called Time for Change was commissioned to be conducted by Sir Stephen Bobba in 2014. Fast forward to February 2020. Man of the moment, Matt Hancock, faced a pre-action legal letter from the Equality and Human Rights Commission for potentially breaking the European Convention on Human Rights, with over 2,000 people still in these institutions. A year later, Sir Norman wrote his own article titled We Have Failed to Learn the Lessons of Winterbourne View. Well, joining me now to discuss 10 years since the publication of the initial government report is Sir Norman Lamb. I'm delighted, Norman, that you're able to join me uh, down the line uh, this afternoon to discuss this. I mean, before Winterbourne View, there were clearly difficulties uh, with those in care, whether they were suffering from autism or they had learning disabilities. And yet it took uh, that programme from Panorama to really jolt people into what we had hoped at the time was some action. When you look back at that time, I was reading through your report and, uh, and how you found it all so devastating. Tell us a little bit about what was found at that time. Well, it was really shocking, Arlene. Uh, but I think, in a way, the more shocking thing is that the scandals keep happening. Mm. Um, I, I remember at the time after I became minister in 2012, I invited uh, families of people uh, who'd been in Winterbourne View to come to see me at the Department of Health. And to hear one particular dad, a guy called Steve Sollers, talk about how he was watching his son become increasingly zombie-like, uh, how obviously he was being pumped with antipsychotic drugs, uh, and he felt he could do nothing about it. He, he made complaints to the local NHS, to the council, but he said no one was listening to me. And what really shocked me was he, he said he felt guilty that he could do nothing for his son. And I just felt, what has it got to where we leave a parent feeling guilty because of the failure of the state to care for very vulnerable people? And uh, But, you know, I come back to the fact that, tragically, these scandals keep happening. Uh, and I think my conclusion is that when we persist in having these closed cultures, often a long way from where people live, uh, hidden away from public view, bad things will happen. And uh, and therefore, I strongly argue for a move away from this sort of institutional care. We, we know that many people who are locked up in institutional care could cope in their own, on the in the community, with support, uh, with a much better life. Uh, as an alternative to institutional care, but uh, you know it requires commitment and drive from government and from the entire system to make it happen, and that's been lacking, I'm afraid. Mm. 